Thank you for joining us. We appreciate you uh, spending some time with us um, this morning in advance of the race at Talladega. So we're going to roll straight into questions. We have several hands already raised for Ryan and to take our first question. We're going to go to Bob Pockers. Go ahead, Bob. Yeah, good morning, Ryan. Uh, good morning, Ryan. Um, I was wondering, uh, Brad said yesterday that you that you guys had the Zoom meeting on Tuesday about kind of what to do and what not to do <laughs> at, you know, in Talladega, had a race with teammates. I'm curious, how did you feel that went from your perspective? Awkward listening and being involved in that, knowing what happened between Brad and Joey at the end of the 500? Um, I, I wouldn't say it was awkward. Um, you know, we just had a call with, you know, myself, Joey, Brad, uh, Matt DiBandetto, um, RP uh, and, and other Penske members just trying to figure out, you know, what's the best way to kind of approach these races and how to finish them out. Um, even though I was, you know, I was on the couch, uh, speaking of Joe Legano, he just tried to call me, but, uh, you know, being, being on the couch, watching the end of that race, cause we wrecked so early, um, you, you know, you're still a part of it and, and you still hopefully find yourself in a situation at the end of the race to where yourself or your teammate has a, Joe Legano needs to stop calling me, man. And, uh, you know, I, uh, it's something that, um, we talked about just, just trying to find the best way that we, if we are in a spot where we're one, two coming to the end of this thing, how do we go about that? You know, how do we go about to make sure and do our best that we finish one, two, you know, no matter who wins. Um, so I feel like we had a really good discussion, um, uh, between all of us and hopefully we have a, a good plan and, and hopefully we find ourselves in that spot again to where we have teammates lined up at the end of this thing and we're leading to, to try to work together and, and win the race. That's the ultimate goal. And um, obviously the, not the goal, you know, is what happened at Daytona. And that was just, you know, two guys racing hard, but you want to avoid that um, because, you know, it's not good for, for the whole team, but uh, it's, it's hard to put yourself in that mindset, you know, when you're out there competitive or competing in the heat of the battle uh, you know, everyone wants to win. So um, those things are tough, but I thought we had a really good discussion. And uh, hopefully we can apply the things that we talked about and, and try to, you know, finish one, two, three, four, or one, two, or whatever it is, just try to get, you know, a pension car in victory lane. Thank you. Well, okay. We're going to take our next question. <coughs> Dustin Long. Go ahead, Dustin. Thank you. Uh, Ryan, it, it, along those lines, um, you know, when you won at Talladega in June, um, you know, coming to the line, you had the contact with the 20. You said afterwards you wanted to get close. You, you'd made the big block going way down from the top line to the bottom line to block. And then you came up and, 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 and so you wanted to kind of keep close, but made contact. He wrecked, uh, you win. Um, if the 20 is a teammate, do you feel like after this discussion that you can race that way? Or look, you can race a teammate that way because that's how you race the rest of the field and want to race uh, in June at this track. You know, that's a good question, and I uh, feel like you kind of set me up for something, but I think, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it's hard to, <clears throat> you know, predict that stuff. Um, you know, so I, I don't know, you know, until you're in that situation, you don't really know what you're going to do or, or what the circumstances are. Um, and, yeah, you know, the deal with me in the 20 last year, <clears throat> you know, yeah, we made, we made contact come to the line and just, kind of trying to side draft and, and making contact and just a wild end of that race. So I, I don't know, you know, I don't know if, if that is the two car, you know, I don't know what I do as far as you're trying to just block any lane that you can. And, um, you know, that, that's a tough, that's a tough one. So until we're in that situation and it happens, I'm not sure how to answer that, but uh, you try to at least hope that one of us win, right. No matter whether it's me or, uh, you know, the figurative two car that or 22 or whatever, you know, you try to make sure one of us wins. So yeah, you're going to race teammates better than you race, you know, other people, especially coming to the line, just as far as giving, giving them room and things like that. But that's a tough one to, to answer. Would I do the same thing just because uh, that wasn't the situation. Also in that race, uh, you were certainly helped by the 47 and the 13 uh, latter part of the race and kind of giving you a run up there. Um, and I know the 47, I think throughout was a pretty good pusher. Uh, you had talked after the race that, you know, because of the pit strategies, you and your teammates really couldn't find each other in that situation, you know, obviously manufacturer uh, teammates are important. 
were you ever concerned that the 47 13 were going were would try to do things to dump you out and was that led to maybe some of the early moves you made to kind of get away from them and make your move to be able to put yourself in position to win yeah um yeah like you said the way the pitch strategies kind of lined up and and turned out you know i the 22 or two where they weren't around you know they were kind of further in the pack and um you know i'm like dang i don't and there's not really a lot of forwards behind me i don't know how i'm gonna win this race but and yeah that that thought did go through my head like well they might just shuck me out you know and and sometimes you have no control if they shuck you out or not uh but you know fortunate that it was the end of that race and you know the 47 was really fast all day and uh we were able to get a run off too and he was able to shove me to the lead um so at the end, it's, it's, and it's tough. It's kind of go with who you can, you know, in some, in some situations it's, it's go with who's got to run as long as you don't dump your teammate. You know, if, if I dump, you know, not dumb wreck, but like leave your teammate for, for the, the lane that's coming, that's, you know, not going to go over as well. Um, but in that spot, we just coming down to the end of the race and, and you had to take the run that was given to you. But you never know what the person behind you is going to do, if they're going to bail on you um, or what. And that's just kind of you're, you're putting faith in that person behind you to continue to be on your bumper and push you ahead. But um, it's, it's so tough sitting here and, and trying to predict the end of these races. You kind of just you try to do the best you can at making decisions in the moment. And, um, you know, that's that just decision was made when I felt like they had a run. I'm like, I got to go or less or else he's going to the 47 is going to lead the train and, and pass all of us. Um, so th those decisions you make in the moment. And um, it's just it's just one that worked out. Thank you, Ryan. Welcome. OK, our next question is going to come from Michelle Martinelli. Go ahead, Michelle. Hi, Ryan. Um, this week, you, you tweeted about justice for George Floyd the other day after the verdict became known. Um, I was just wondering why it was so important to you to say something and voice your reaction publicly like that. Because I think it was the right thing to do. Um, you know, I usually don't. I'm not a big social media person, um, you know, but that verdict, what happened last year, was wrong um you know I, I was wrong that uh, george floyd got you know what happened to him happened um and he i feel like i looked at it as that he should not have passed away and the way that was handled was um you know in my mind not handled the best way um in the situation and i wanted to say something that you know just showing you know, support just because I thought it was the right thing to say. You know, I, I think uh, the right thing to do was, was the verdict that came out and, um, you know, just the situation that happened. So I just felt like it was the right thing to do uh, because it was, it was my personal stance on, you know, you never, you know, you, you can't, you can't, you know, you're never going to be able to repay a life, you know, to that family, to the Floyd family. Um, but the best thing you can do is have someone who is held accountable for their actions like that officer was. And that was just uh, what I wanted to say. Thank you. Okay, our next question is gonna come from Mike Salarte. Go ahead, Mike. Sorry about that. Got a little oh, go ahead. technical issue on my end. It's an operator error. Um, getting back to the uh, the the chess match that is Talladega. Is that something you kind of dig? I mean, do you like all of that thinking about which line's coming, which line isn't coming? Do I leave my teammate? Do I, you know, try to pull someone? And it, it, are you? Is that even a thought at two hundred miles an hour? Or are you, are you just kind of saying, all right, how am I just going to get to the front? Let's let's just worry about getting to the front on my own. Yeah, I've always enjoyed uh, speedway racing. Um, you know, you, you go into those races, any speedway race, Talladega, Daytona, understanding what can happen, you know, kind of the unpredictability of those places on, hey, I could get tore up lap two and just kind of get caught up in someone else's mess. Um, but I, I like the racing. It's just a different kind of racing. You know, it's, it's uh, uh, 
like you said, a kind of a chess match sort of deal of what lane you think is coming at the right time and you jumping in it and um, trying to work lanes and things like that. It's, it's a, it's a neat style of racing. So um, you love it when you win there and run good and survive it. You hate the place when you get wrecked. So, um, you know, you kind of can get mixed feelings every time you go back, but um, I, I enjoy it. Um, and it's been, you know, it's been good to us a couple of years um, being able to, to squeak one out there, but, or a couple out there. Um, but yeah, I, I enjoy it. It's, it's a lot of teamwork. You know, it's, it's a lot of teamwork between your spotter and the driver and, and your teammates and, and, you know, Fords. It's a, it's a lot of teamwork. So uh, I like that side of it, uh, that the communication really has to be uh, the best that it can be. Um, and working with Josh Williams, my spotter, he's, he's done a great job and we've done a good job of getting better every year of, of, uh, of him watching the race and kind of telling me a lot of information on what to do. I usually don't like a lot of, you know, talking on the radio or information besides the speedways because, you know, you just need that constant info. Um, so I, I like that side that everyone's really involved and uh, takes a lot of a lot of teamwork communication to, to run well there. But sometimes you can get all thrown out the window with getting wrecked. But uh, you just understand that when you go there. <coughs> Okay, our next question is going to come from Alex. Andrea, go ahead, Alex. Hey, Ryan, I'm, uh, I'm hoping now that we're about 10 races in that you can just, just kind of provide an update on where you feel like the 12 team is at right now and then kind of Penske as a whole as it compares to the competition. Yeah, um, you know, I think it's been a pretty good start to our year. Uh, you know, kind of take away the first three races, we're kind of unfortunate for us. Um, but other than that, I feel like we've, we've made a really, really strong showing, um, and, and getting a win early in the year is obviously nice. Um, so I think the 12 groups in a really good spot right now. Uh, you know, there's, there's some things we got to clean up at some places, you know, like the Martinsville deal. Now it's nice having a good run there and winning a couple stages, but, but, uh, the, the deal that happened at the end of the race, the final pitch stop, you're like, Oh my gosh, it's, you know, it's just things we got to clean up. So, uh, and that comes with time, you know, as, as we get going, you figure out the, places you can improve at and uh, you, you sit down and figure that out. But uh, so I think the 12 groups doing really good right now. I think Penske as a whole is, is running strong. Um, you know, I'm, you know, we're fifth in the stands. I think, I think Joey's second or third. I think he's, I don't know where he's second or third. And, um, you know, so, so I think we're strong um, and, and the two cars been running good too. And, and they'll get a win here soon. And the 21 has been, you know, starting to, to click off good finishes. They kind of had bad luck. So I think as a, as a group, uh, we're getting close to where we need to be. Uh, there's a couple teams that are, are really fast. You know, Hendrick Gibbs are, are really fast right now. So we have to you know, keep working hard to stay with those guys. And, and Stuart Haas will get it figured out here and they'll be strong once again. So uh, you always got to stay on top of your game. You can never really be satisfied of where you're at um, because, you know, no other team is satisfied where they're at. They're always working. So you have to be in that same mindset. But right now I think it's going really well. You just got to keep it up and keep finding ways to improve. Does, does it feel like there's one team or organization that's kind of emerged as the favorite or is it all pretty even right now still? Um, you know, I think Hendrick's been really good this year, you know, and they've shown that with, you know, three of their cars getting a win. Um, you know, the five cars been fast with 48 win in this weekend or last weekend at Richmond. Um, you know, they've been super strong out of the box and, you know, the nine car is going to be good here uh, very shortly. So, uh, they're them to me, they've been really strong. Um, and Gibbs, you know, it's, it's hard to say, but, uh, I think those two teams have been, been really strong and I think we've been right there with them. Um, but I don't think you can have like a, a tippy top, top dog team right now. I think it's between the three of us and, um, it's just a matter of who hits it right on any given weekend. Thank you. Okay. Our next question is going to come from John Newby. Go ahead. <coughs> Thank you. So, my question is, what is it about Talladega and speedways in general that fits so well with your skill set, considering that you have a history of success there and multiple wins? Is it that constant string of communication you mentioned earlier, or is there a different factor in play? Uh, that's part of it. Um, you know, communication between spotter drivers is really good. Um, bringing fast cars is obviously a huge help. Um, and some of it, I mean, you got to, you got to pepper in a little bit of luck too. You know, I mean, you know, I talked about it earlier of you can get tore up and it's none of your doing, you're just riding around there and, and someone slips up a little bit and you're in a 15 car pile up. So and all those things mixed together as far as being successful at Talladega and, 
trying to find yourself in the right spot at the right time. And if you do find yourself, you know, at the end of these races of capitalizing on it, and that goes back to the driver spotter combination. So um, I think it's different skills at different points of the races, um, kind of different situations, but uh, yeah, it's just, it's just trying to find yourself at the end of these things and uh, trying to make the most of the situation. Perfect. Thank you. <clears throat> yep. Okay. Our next question will come from Woody Kane. Go ahead, Woody. Hey, Ryan, appreciate your time. I wanted to get you to look ahead a week for us at Kansas. You've had six top tens there, but it's coming up on 10 years since the track was repaved. And I'm wondering if you've noticed a change in the way it races over the time you've been in Cup. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I never got to race it uh, before it got repaved. Uh, um, but I, I feel like it's aged pretty good. You know, I mean, um, we were able to run all over that racetrack. Uh, the only thing that I would probably say is I wish it was a little bit rougher, you know, as far as bumps and things like that. Um, but, you know, you can't complain about it too much. It's, it's probably aged the best out of any track that has been paved in the last 10 years. You know, I'd say that because, you know, you look at like a Michigan, um, like a Phoenix, things like that. Uh, before they, they added the, the VHT there, it was kind of hard to move around. So um, to be able to have a track like that, run all the way at the wall, on the bottom, in the middle. That, that's pretty, pretty good. So uh, I think it's aged very nicely. Um, I don't know what's different with the pavement that they use there compared to other repaves that has made it like that. Um, but it, it's been doing pretty well. So it's been a good track for us. Uh, it'd be nice to finish one out there. But um, I, I give it a thumbs up on the aging process, and that'll just get better with time. Thank you. Well. Okay. Our next question is going to come from Chris Estrada. Go ahead, Chris. Ryan, thanks for joining us. As a driver at Talladega, you have so many things to keep in mind, knowing where your teammates are in the pack, others that can help you, all while knowing that any plan could go awry in an instant. So as your cup career has progressed, how has your mental approach changed as far as trying to balance all those things? Is there still a sense of stress or is there a sense of it's Talladega, it's super speedway racing, it is what it is? Yeah, I don't really get stressed. Um when you go there, you know, like I said, you, you kind of, you go into that race knowing what it is, um, knowing that there's a lot of things that are out of your control that can happen to you. Um, and you just learn to deal with it and you make the best of the situation. Now, I don't, I don't think about, you know, an accident could happen at any moment throughout the race. If you think about that, then your, your mind's somewhere else, you know, but you understand what it can be. But when you're out there running, you're not like, oh, we might wreck, we might wreck, we might wreck. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid to get in a wreck. You never, never think about that. At least I don't. So um, if it happens, it happens. Um, and, and until it, it does happen, um, you, you're not conscious of that at all. You're trying to figure out ways to get to the front, stay there and lead laps and win stages, win the race. Um, so, yeah, I, uh, I, I feel like as you get older and you, and you run more speedway races, get more experience on them, you understand more what they are and what they're all about and, and approach them a little bit differently. Uh, I feel like I feel like when you're young and, you know, it's your first little bit of cup speedway racing, uh, you're really aggressive. Um, I feel like people are really you can be really aggressive. I know I was for sure, uh, but in a different way, you know, I, I, I'm aggressive nowadays, too. But you go about it in a different way. It's kind of hard to explain, but um, maybe not do dumb moves like, you know, a, a young person would do. But, uh, yeah, I just. Uh, you just, as you gain experience, you gain knowledge of, of how these races play out and you try to uh, use that to your band. Thank you. Okay, our next question will come from Daniel McFadden. Go ahead, Daniel. <clears throat> hey, Ryan. Um, sort, sort of going off that last qu question, um, I mean, you've been competing at Taldega since 2012. So at, at what point in those first few years did you have like an aha moment about, you know, what it took to, to, get around Taldega and get to the end? And what, do you remember what that moment was? I don't know if there was a certain moment, uh, you know, but you just kind of gain information as you run there more and figure out how to work air better. You know, I think that's something that people who have a lot of experience at those places, they can work the air really efficiently as far as like side drafting, getting in front of runs, taking the right run at the right time, uh, that stuff gets better. And that just comes with experience, you know, of like, you know, as before, let's say you would take, you know, any kind of mediocre run, you'd be like, oh, I got to take it. And you just fall back. 
Uh, so now you're a little bit more conscious of, of, eh, that's, that's not really a good run. I'm not going to take that. Let's just stay in line and see if another, a better one builds up. So that's something you kind of learn as you get, uh, as you get running in a more and you gain experience. Another one is, uh, Oh, heck, what year was it? We ran fourth there in like 2016 or 2015 or something. And um, I didn't take a run when I when I probably should have taken a run. And I look back on the race, I'm like, well, dummy, like you should have taken that run. But back then you don't know any better. Uh, so those things you kind of just learn throughout the years. And Harrison Burton, he's making his cup debut at, at Talladega this Sunday. Do you remember what, what do you remember about your first cup start at like Talladega or Daytona and do you remember like how was it different to what you'd experienced it in Xfinity or the truck series yeah I made my first Talladega cup start in 2014 um it was actually in the 12 car we ran two races that year and uh I remember it happens really fast um a lot faster than you know I ran trucks and Xfinity at Talladega before that um but it happens so much faster in the cup stuff especially the package now uh, the package now, things happen really fast. The runs are huge. You can't block some of these runs that come. You kind of just have to deal with it and try to rebuild some momentum. Um, and, you know, Harrison getting his first start at Talladega, it'll be uh, with no practice. You know, you're not, you don't feel how these things draft until we're racing. He'll get, he'll get a good feel for it. He's a really good race car driver. And I'm sure he'll do great. But um, I remember it just happens quick. And, and you and your spotter have to be in sync with your movements and, and kind of how you're going about uh the race and things like that in your lanes so that's something that um that's something that he'll learn very quickly and i'm sure he'll pick it up right away uh but that was something i i, I really remember is things happen really quickly and you can't really prepare for that you just have to experience it thank you all right. Well, Ryan, thank you so much for joining us. I apologize. We didn't get to all the questions, but I do appreciate you spending a little bit of extra time with us this morning. Yeah, and no we wish you the best of luck uh, in Talladega. All right. Thank you, guys.